So, hello, I'm Jason Fo, and I fly drones. Now, I've been doing this for about two years now, and it, it has changed so much, the industry and the hobby. So, first off, let's get into what a drone is. Now, a drone is a vehicle that is unmanned and controlled from the ground. So, applications of drones, they do aerial photography, surveillance, um, actually a college in the U.S. has them delivering burritos to college students' um, doorsteps. And also they abduct small children. So, let's see. So, well, the first thing that sparked my passion in drones is um, when I stumbled across the Drone Racing League, the DRL. So after that, I actually looked up drone racing and this YouTube channel popped up called Rotor Riot. So, I went through, watched all the videos that I possibly could in the time that I was supposed to be sleeping, and the next day I went over to one of my teachers, Mr. Best, and asked him, hey, what is drone racing? How do I get into this? And he actually told me that he had a drone that was for racing, but he never used it, and he gave it to me. And then after that, I met um, another drone racer in Japan. Uh, his name was Mr. Nate, and also he's the person who actually taught me everything that I know currently about drone racing. And um, he nurtured my hobby, and it took me to here, where I have a YouTube channel, and I fly regularly. Now, in my research of drones, I came across this drone called the Dead Cat. Um, so there was a Dutch artist, his name was Bart Jansen, and what he did is he took his dead cat to a taxidermy company, and he asked if they could turn it into a drone. and. Um, this is what they produced. So, the, the natural layout of a cat are two legs in the front and two legs in the back, and this made for an H shape that is utilized in a lot of old quad designs. And this was really good because it pretty much took the propellers out of the view of the camera, since a lot of people use drones for cinematography. So, the, but one, downside to this is that the drone in turn is very big. Now, let's see, and talking about bigger drones, we're actually trying to avoid them. We're trying to get smaller and smaller because they're dangerous, they're loud, people don't trust them, they cause a lot of damage on impact, so everybody's moving along to these tinier micro-sized quads. And the benefits to these are they're so much lighter, so when they do impact something, not as much damage inflicted. It's so much more practical, practical to carry around. And also, um, the technology is finally catching up with these, where these are actually more powerful than their bigger counterparts. Now, let's go on to my MVP. So my MVP is actually based off of the drone in the top left corner called the Total Rotor Katak. This was a frame that was developed by my mentor, James Tan, in Singapore, and he distributes them on his store. And I chose to base it off of his design because it's very durable, it's lightweight, and also it does its job in racing. Now, what I did is I shrunk the quad down so that it doesn't use 5-inch propellers anymore, it uses 3-inch. And I made it underslung as well. Underslung means that the battery is being carried under the drone like this. Now the benefits to this is you can actually have a lot more battery options, size, voltage, and whatnot. And also, when your drone crashes, it's more likely to land upright, meaning you can get back up and fly. Um, also, with my MVP design, what I did is I slid the camera as far forward as possible on the face of the cat. That way, it does the same thing as the first version of the dead cat, where it clears the props out of the view. So, let's move on to the research. Now, my research consisted mainly of reading as many articles as I possibly could and watching YouTube videos on drone theory, like motor layout, um, underslung versus top slung batteries, center of gravity, and also power to weight ratio. Um, let's see. So then I also went over to James at Total Rotor and asked him for advice and pointers and tips on how to cat a drone frame and what I should look out for. And then that's when the process started. So, most, a lot of time actually in the beginning, I was just sitting around trying to sketch out a design that I really liked and was practical. 
And what I came up with was this cat design. Now, um, let's see. So I started from a sketch, and then I went to catting it. And then I actually produced a 3D printed version of it, to, just to make sure that all the parts fit together. Then after that, I went ahead and converted it and had it laser cut. That way, it would actually, it's in the right file format to be produced like on a CNC machine out of carbon fiber, the material that I'm hoping that this will be made out of. And then after that, I went over to Total Rotor and I went to James and asked him, hey, can you criticize my frame for me? And he completely tore it apart. He said that the ears were gonna break off, arms were way too thin, carbon fiber is not lining up correctly and all of the holes are the wrong size. And then I also went around his office and asked random employees there, hey, what do you think this looks like? And they said that it looked like a bunny and not a cat, so I had to go ahead and revise that as well. So, after stopping by Toto Rotor, I went ahead, went home, and started fixing up all the uh, design errors that I made. I started, I made sure that the carbon fiber would actually fit one piece inside another, resized all of the holes so that the proper screws could go into them, and also took away all the sharp corners and edges that I possibly could to avoid having them break. Um, and, of course, most importantly, it looks more like a cat now. So, final design is this laser cut version. Now, the design that I chose is a true X formation. This means that all the motors are equidistant apart from each other, and that gives it a very neutral flight characteristic, meaning that one motor doesn't have to work harder to turn the quad rather than having it in the um, dead cat design. Also, again, it's underslung for the landing upright if it does crash, and also it looks more cat-like, and that's, that's what I was going for. So, actually, because this isn't a final design, this is just a prototype of what I want to be cut out of carbon fiber, I actually went ahead and found the closest drone that we had in the makerspace that would fly to that, and it turns out that this is actually resembles it really closely. It has a camera out front, true X design, and also is an underslung battery. So I went out and flew it, and this is some footage that uh, I got off of the thing. Standing in this project, I am actually at a kind of standstill because I'm, I was anticipating using the CNC machine that we have in the robotics department to cut it, the frame out of carbon fiber, but due to um, technical issues, it's not working. So, and cutting these out with, like professionally, would cost at least $100 and I would have a bunch of extra frames that I wouldn't know what to do with since it's not ready to be um, put out for sale yet. So, um, uh, if you want to help, I accept PayPal, cash, you can fund my project. But um, also, uh, this is almost the final design. I'm hoping to have one cut out of carbon fiber. That way I can just throw it around, see what breaks, and then continue working from there, fixing it. But from a design perspective, it should hold up against all the other frames. Now, um, I'm hoping that this will impact the drone community by bringing a new rig out to the market that nobody else has. It not only looks different, but it also should fly different from all the other frames out there because of the smaller, um, what's it called, the smaller distance between the motors. And also, I'm just, I'm just hoping to bring out a new rig for everybody in the drone community to use because they've given me so much help. All the countless hours I spent on Facebook asking all the different drone people, hey, how do I fix my drone? And I just want, I want to give something back to them. And then also, speaking of smaller drones, we are 
planning to host a micro drone race. Details are still to be um, worked out, but this is, this is um, supposed to maybe open up aviation to the rest of the school and also give the current aviation club members something fun to participate in a little friendly competition. And I don't know, we're, we actually were getting drones into the makerspace and hopefully that people can just come in, fly it around, test it out if they like it and maybe join the club if they really want to. Um, and that is the end. So again, I want this frame to possibly go out on the market so that people can actually get into the hobby for cheaper since it is a smaller drone and also I want to get people interested with the race that way they can probably join the community and also help push this hobby forward as much as possible. Ta -da.